This video is for Calculus 3 on the topic of cylinders in three dimensions. A cylinder is a surface obtained by tracing a generating curve along a straight line. An equation that is missing a variable in R3 will result in a cylinder. So we want to get away from our a traditional way of thinking about a cylinder as a circular tube because in calculus 3 a cylinder is going to be any equation that only has two variables present and then um, the third variable with no restrictions and so we trace along that axis. The two-dimensional graph of the function is called the generating curve of the cylinder. The cylinder expands along the axis of the missing variable. So in this example, we want to graph z equals y squared in R3. So looking at that equation, there's no x listed, and so that tells us there's no restriction on x. What we want to do is start by graphing the generating curve, and then we'll know that the graph expands along the x-axis, so because there's no restriction on x. So here's our generating curve. We have the y, z axes, because those are the two variables present in the equation. And we know that z equals y squared in two dimensions is a parabola. So we have the parabola z equals y squared. And now what we want to do is transfer that to three dimensions. So we have our x, y, z axes. And we have this parabola z equals y squared. And that, can, that parabola can be anywhere on the x-axis. And so we could have it at positive x or at negative x. And so we end up with this kind of half pipe um, where we have the parabola and the walls are going to keep going up forever. It's a parabola, so it goes up towards um, infinite z and out towards infinite y, just like a regular parabola in two dimensions would. And so we end up with this parabolic half pipe that expands in the x positive and negative direction forever. So that's a good example of a cylinder in three dimensions. And you can really have any two-dimensional graph in R3 so that you don't have the, um, the restriction on the third variable, and it will create some kind of cylinder by this definition. Example 2 asks us to graph 4x squared plus y squared equals 36 in R3. Notice that there's no restriction on z, so it's going to expand up and down along the z-axis. Let's focus on our generating curve. So in two dimensions, the graph of 4x squared plus y squared equals 36 in two dimensions is an ellipse. And remember the standard form for an ellipse is um, x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. So in this case if we divide both sides by 36 we have x squared over 9 plus y squared over 36 equals 1. That tells us that the x-intercepts are um, plus or minus 3, comma, 0, and the y-intercepts are 0, comma, plus or minus 6, so the square root of the denominator in each case. So if we graph that on the x-y plane, we'll have a tall, skinny ellipse. So it goes from negative 3 to 3 on the x-axis and negative 6 to 6 on the y-axis. Now translating this to three dimensions, we have our x, y, z plane, or axes. And I'm going to just plot those points. y is 6 and negative 6, x is 3 and negative 3, and um, draw my ellipse. 
And then for expanding along the z-axis, I'm just going to make um, lines going up and down parallel to the axis with that um, ellipse on top and below. And so we end up with that great, um, great cylinder that's elliptical in shape. It's like a, an elliptical tube going up and down forever in the positive and negative z directions. So just remember on these cylinders in three dimensions, we're not restricted to a tube, a circular tube, like you usually think of when you say the word cylinder. We're just talking about any equation that's missing a variable and so it expands along an axis.